Now, it's no secret that the Empire is not exactly considered humane or ethical, especially in regard to the Imperial prison system. If that's a surprise to you, then by the force, what planet-sized rock have you been living under? So, that's what we're covering today. Fun stuff. The last thing the Emperor and his Empire care about is the well-being of its people. With the ISB and many other Imperial civilian control corps having specialised in locking people up for speaking out against his Imperial Majesty. Now, no prison is good news for anyone no matter if it is the Republic, Separatist, Sith, Mandalorian Hut or Jedi. But Imperial prisons are really something else. Now, it's important to understand why Imperial prisons are so brutal, and to do that we need to start with the Empire itself, which you can think of as a layered system, with the first layer being what they want you to see. You know, the promise of peace, justice and security against threatening external forces, stamping out crime and dissent, all that nonsense. But when you peel back the curtains a bit and delve deeper into those layers, you start to see what the Empire really intends behind the guise of these hollow and false statements, and that is control, power and domination over the weak and those that think differently. That's where Imperial prisons come in. These places are not just for the criminals and outlaws of galactic society, but most who simply just don't accept the Empire or want something different or better. So let's look at these places today and hopefully it'll show you why you probably would not want to end up there. So first, what makes a prison distinctly Imperial? Well. A number of things, and it's not just the overbearing insignia, banners and constant reminders that it is an Imperial prison, no. What sets the Empire's prisons apart is purely in their treatment of those held within, and what the purpose of the prisoner's incarceration is. Simply put, Imperial prisons don't treat their prisoners very well, like, at all. With even the smallest crime landing you a solid amount of time in one of these places, and these prisons are used for a whole host of things, forced manual labour, torture, interrogation, experimentation, and keeping high priority personnel working on projects that they probably don't want to work on. Forced manual labour is a popular one for the Empire, as, let's be honest, who really wants to willingly work on super weapons of mass destruction, with most large scale Imperial manufacturing operations requiring a vast division of workers to assemble the parts needed for whatever said operation may be. And there really is no better example of that than Narki. The Narkina 5 prison complex is the best possible example of the Empire's complete and total disregard for the well-being of its citizens. This facility was built and constructed as a major production line for a little Imperial weapons program, you might have heard of it. The Death Star? Ring any bells? You heard me right, the first Death Star. Those who were deemed labour worthy were ripped off the streets from all across the galaxy and shipped off without warning to this little water moon where they were forced to take on gruelling manual labour with the threat of losing their life to the floor every single day. Life in this prison was difficult as the floors were made of tungstoid steel and were rigged to send an extremely high voltage of electricity should any of the prisoners step out of line, killing them pretty much instantly. With no access to the outside world, prisoners were forced to work all day and every day with no breaks in between. So just what exactly were they manufacturing in those giant prisons? Well. At full operational capacity, Narkina 5 produced hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of components that would end up in the dish of the first Death Star's super laser. What these components were I have no clue, but this was completely unbeknownst to the prisoners, slaving away day after day to help create a planet killing super weapon of mass destruction. So what was life like when not working? Well, apart from the constant threat of having the floors activated, Privacy was not a thing as inmates were kept in open cells with a bed, toilet tube thing and a small port that fed them slop on a tray. These were anything but the most lavish accommodations and this was for people who had hardly committed any crimes I should remind you. On a production floor consisting of seven tables per floor, teams of seven worked on component after component, competing with other floors to produce the most amount of parts that they could in the shortest amount of time inspiring competition and animosity between other floors. 
any time the guards appeared in the same room as the prisoners, they would have to stand on program as they called it, which involved putting your hands behind your head, your feet down and facing forward, to ensure compliance. But the Narkina 5 prison complex is quite unique compared to most Imperial prisons. The same can't be said for the Wookie. The Wookiees just cannot catch a break as the Empire has really given them the short end of the stick. Simply put, the Empire does not see these guys as equal and they're thus relegated to being classed as lesser life forms. Shackled, put in chains and separated from each other, the Wookiees are taken from their homes within the treetops and then incarcerated in Imperial facilities and refineries all across the planet before being shipped off to work on Imperial construction projects off-world. Due to Kashyyyk's rich natural resources, Imperial forces have wrecked the planet, gathering what they can in order to fuel the Imperial war machine. That resource also includes the Wookiees, with their powerful physiology making for great labourers, with the work for these guys being grilling, with non-stop work in dangerous environments constructing stations, star destroyers, tanks and anything the Empire uses throughout its military. The cages they are kept in, if you can even call them that, are nothing more than glorified holes in the walls, with no bedding, toiletries or food dispension of any kind, leaving the Wookiees with next to nothing as they await their transfer off-world, to be sold to the Pike Syndicate and sent to the Spice Mines of Kessel, or any other mining operation across the galaxy. That's just Kashyyyk. What about Fortress Inquisitor? Fortress Inquisitorius was the main place the Empire had been keeping its captured Jedi, with a labyrinthian prison built within that housed the Force Sensitives. The main purpose of this place was to extract information about the whereabouts of other Jedi and members of the Orders from those that had been captured, potentially turning those captured Jedi into Inquisitors themselves. This information extraction process was difficult, to say the least as it involved a gruelling session of torture through psychological manipulation and electrocution, with incarceration in Fortress Inquisitorius lasting years, and at the end of it, you either became an Inquisitor or were killed, having your body suspended as a trophy in a large tomb of sorts to remind the Inquisitors of each of their kills. This tomb housed the corpses of hundreds of Jedi killed throughout the years, post Order 66, a prison of the memories of the fallen victims of the Inquisitorius, damned to be a constant reminder and warning to those who oppose the Empire. This really puts into perspective how vicious the Inquisitors were, as their torture intended to deprive any and all Jedi of a connection to the Force and a will to live, and it was at this point that they were stuffed into the wall and forced to be a trophy until the end of time. So those are some of the most interesting Imperial prisons that have popped up over the years. I know it's only three, but... How else could I make this video interesting when most Imperial prisons look like this? So to finish up, why don't we cover what Imperial prisons do to those inside them? Is that it? Are we done cutting me off? If you've ever been inside an Imperial prison, chances are you've seen one of these floating around. These are called ITO interrogation units, and they can do a handful of things to make their victims talk. Including, but not limited to, sonic wave torture, nerve electroshock therapy, invasive probing of the mind, painful truth serum, and flesh peeling. These little droids are a whole world of pain in and of themselves, and the visage of that terrifyingly large needle sticking out the side of them is enough to send even the hardiest of folks into a world of fear. Add the incessant warbling of their repulsor lifts, and you've unfortunately got a recipe for one scary little droid. Forced manual labour is a popular one, with Imperial labour camps situated all throughout the galaxy forcing captured prisoners to manufacture Imperial weapons and perform dangerous resource extraction, where a number of things could go wrong. This labour extends to the vacuum of space, Fixing and building ships within Imperial shipyards, as the last thing the Empire wants to do is pay its totally legitimate hard-earned credit for willing labourers, instead opting to take people off the streets and shove them somewhere they don't want to be. With the Empire's awfully dreary looking prison cells comes isolation, with contact being limited to the troopers dragging you in and out of your cell and the officer interrogating you. 
Spending days at a time staring at the same harshly angled wall can really do certain things to certain people. Of course, I would know because we've got a few of them here on board right now. A couple of pirates that the ship's captain captured. She's feared by them all across the sector, especially the ones losing their minds and their cell right now. Or, on the polar opposite end of isolation, you'll be spending time with some of the galaxy's most wanted and most dangerous alien life forms. The galaxy is home to millions of different aliens that all specialise in ways to turn you into nothing but a stain on the wall. Unless a trooper does that to you first. Do you ever get the feeling like you're on the wrong side of history? So overall, I think you and I have both heard enough about this subject. Imperial prisons are a grim place to be and are not something I would wish on anyone, so I advise that you stay out of trouble out there. So with that, why not consider leaving a like, commenting and subscribing to start your journey into the Empire today. And with that, long live the Empire and may the Force be with you.